I'm just returning from a long trip where I spent some time teaching what Samantha will teach us tomorrow about. No doubt as she begins to open the Torah in the book of Genesis, we find how incredibly important it is that we learn from Abraham Avinu, Abraham our father, the concept of hospitality. It is in that way in the face-to-face -face meetings that Abraham has that we are empowered to understand that really it is through our dialogue and our opportunity to be face-to-face -face with individuals that we can change things. And what is so important in the book of Genesis is that Abraham shares that sense of hospitality not with just the individuals, but encourages it with others. And that is certainly true of our relationship with the German embassy and the German ambassador. And it was through the sense of hospitality that he got to know members of our congregation, his hospitality, and it was through our members that we got to know this incredible ambassador. And so, Two who have shared hospitality with each other. I've invited Leslie Maitland to introduce her friend and to introduce to us the ambassador. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm truly honored to introduce German Ambassador Peter Vidig here tonight and to thank him for the fascinating exhibit his embassy has provided on the Holocaust Memorial Project known as Stolpersteine. For years now, I've been a great admirer of Ambassador Vidig, whose leadership of the embassy has been marked by tireless outreach and thoughtful efforts to connect with the American community, including ours here at Washington Hebrew. His engagement with the Jewish world is deep and real, and in recognition of his commitment to religious understanding, the Interfaith Conference of Metropolitan Washington will honor him, as well as our own Rabbi Lustig, at a concert here on November 16th. His wife, Huberta von Fass Wittig, a writer and journalist, is communications director for Seeds of Peace. Before I tell you more about him, uh, Rabbi Skloot actually encouraged me to share a personal story of my own experience with the Stolpersteiner project. As you'll see in the exhibit, Stolpersteiner, or Stumbling Stones, are the work of German artist Gunter Demnig, who has embedded over 61,000 brass plaques and sidewalks throughout Europe to memorialize victims of the Holocaust. Placed in front of a victim's former dwelling, each plaque lists his or her name, birth date, and fate under the Nazis. Some years ago, I arranged to have two Stoposteine placed in front of my grandparents' former home in the beautiful medieval city of Freiburg. I had visited several times during research for my book, and the descendants of the people who had taken over my grandparents' home in 1938 agreed to my request. In the center of the Black Forest in the warm southwest corner of Germany, Freiburg is a town that Ambassador Wittig knows well as he both studied there and served as a professor at its historic and prestigious university. My mother, who was born there, often told me about an aunt in Freiburg, Tante Julie, whom her parents visited without fail after services every Friday night. But when the family fled in 1938, my grandparents lost track of Tante Julie and always wondered whether she had survived. Fast forward. Eight years ago, I received an email from an unknown Frenchman in Lyon, Francois, who had been visiting Freiburg on business. There, he quite literally stumbled upon my two Stolpersteine, bearing the same last name as his father's family, which had also originated in Freiburg. Reaching out to the artist, Francois obtained my contact information, and we discovered that our great-grandfathers had been brothers Francois himself was Tante Julie's great-grandson. She had escaped to Switzerland in the war and died a natural death. And Francois went on to assemble our reconnected family 
at a miraculous and joyful get-together in Paris. Thus, the Stolpersteiner not only memorialized my grandparents, but also thankfully reunited our broken family. Ambassador Wittig himself has made a career of drawing people together. Before coming to Washington as ambassador in April 2014, he was Germany's ambassador to the United Nations in New York. In 2011 and 12, he represented Germany during its tenure as a member of the Security Council. Previously, he served as Director General for United Nations and Global Issues at the German Foreign Office in Berlin. Since joining the German Foreign Service in 1982, Ambassador Wittig also served at its embassy in Madrid as private secretary to the German foreign minister in Bonn and as ambassador in Lebanon and in Cyprus. In addition to Freiburg University, he pursued his academic training in history, political science, and law at Bonn, Canterbury, and Oxford universities. Last year, we were privileged to hear from Ambassador Wittig in connection with our showing of the excellent documentary, Germans and Jews. I'm delighted that he is back to tell us more about the Stolpersteiner Project, which now in more than 20 European countries provides a daily reminder of the deadly consequences of hate and bigotry. Thank you, Ambassador, for sponsoring this exhibit and joining us tonight. Good evening, everybody. Leslie, thank you for your kind introduction. And what a wonderful story of your family related to the Stolpersteiner. <laughs> Rabbi Lustig, uh, Rabbi Skolt, um, members of the congregation, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me start by thanking you for inviting me to be here and uh, to speak about that uh, exhibition. It, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and an honor not just because I can meet members of the congregation and among them good friends, but also because tonight's topic uh, really is personally dear to my heart. So why is the opening of that um, exhibition uh, so special? First, um, it honors our excellent uh, cooperation with you and uh, your members um, uh, of um, uh, the congregation, and it reflects uh, our deep and vibrant relationship and friendship. And furthermore, the Washington Hebrew uh, congregation um, is an outstanding space uh, for an exhibition with such broad and powerful message. And of course, it is your community with Rabbi Lustig at its helm uh, that stands so strongly for tolerance and remembrance and against hate racism and anti-Semitism, a message that is central and a central aspect of the Stumbling Stones exhibition. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you I'm sure have heard about the Stumbling Stones as a way of remembering the victims of the Holocaust or the victims of forced exile in Germany and in other European countries. Now, we are grateful for having the opportunity to show this project here in DC. As Leslie said, uh, the German artist Gunther Demnick came up with the idea of the Stolpersteine as an art project and a very personal form of commemoration in the early 1990s. The first stumbling stone was installed in Berlin Kreuzberg in 1996. Since then, they have exceeded all expectations. Today, there are over 61,000 stumbling stones in over 900 cities and 20 European countries, most of them in Germany. They bring back the memory of 61,000 individuals, their names, their fates, and their stories. And their powerful message has made millions of people stumble in their daily routines, literally and emotionally. The stumbling stones have not only grown in numbers over the years, they have grown in meaning. And for those who lost their relatives in the Holocaust, the stumbling stones create a space for remembrance of their aunts, 
of their grandfather's or mother's story. And the longer the Holocaust lies in the past, the more it becomes history, and the more important are these symbols on places of remembrance. But they also hold a broader message for everybody. Never again. They catch the attention of every bypasser and make one think of one's responsibility, not historically as something of the past, but of something of today, something very vivid and tangible. Ladies and gentlemen, this remembrance of the Holocaust is growing more and more important. Ron Lauder, president of the World Jewish Congress, put it so well when he said, and I quote, I remember as a young boy going to the synagogue to lay flowers on the front door in memory of the Jewish people who died in the Holocaust. I remember also seeing non-Jewish Germans coming there to do the same thing, to lay flowers as a way to say they also remember, as a way to say this should never happen again." End of quote. So stressing this never again message is a very necessary endeavor and also especially today. Anti-Semitism is far from being a specter of the Western world's past. It is a very real and current threat and it is unfortunately growing through known forms of extreme nationalism and rightist movements that are on the rise, but also through new forms of Islamic extremism, of Islamic extremism and an extreme anti-Zionism that denies Israel's right to exist or its right to live in security. These developments are not a national phenomenon, as we know. They are not only German or French or American. They can be observed on both sides of the Atlantic in many, many countries. Be it openly anti-Semitic statements by the alt-right in the US, raids by Islamist terrorists on Jewish institutions in France, or the desecration of U Jewish cemeteries by German neo-Nazis. Anti-Semitism is not only an unacceptable attack on Jewish life and Jewish people, it is an attack on our liberal societies as a whole, on liberty, openness, tolerance, an attack on the very core of our values. So these words, never again, must also be followed by decisive action, incitement to ethnic or racial hatred and Holocaust denial remain a crime in Germany and are severely punished. Chancellor Merkel has tightened and enforced measures against hate speech in recent years, which is also a growing phenomenon around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the stumbling stones are part of this never again message. They remind us individually of how important tolerance is, but also just how fragile our open democratic order can be, and how everybody has to defend these values in his or her community. The actions we are taking now will shape the future we will share. And it gives me great consolation and joy that we are keeping the memory alive, also here in DC, and they were standing side by side in upholding our common values. And I hope many Washingtonians will take advantage of this. Ladies and gentlemen, one, one final thing before I close. Remembrance depends also on every individual's effort. It rises with the participation that occurs in a community. I would therefore highly encourage you to also take the opportunity to express your feelings and make comments on the exhibition in the guest book that will be available. Please share your thoughts about this exhibition. Thank you once again for having me here in the Hebrew congregation, and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy and benefit from this exhibition. Thank you so much.
this opportunity that you give us is a, a phenomenal opportunity once again. And your own personal sensitivity, Ambassador, is so important and sets such an example. The concept of social art, the concept of art that reminds us and has the confluence of not only the memory of a particular individual, but reminds us that we have a responsibility to that memory. You have done that in so many ways. Your leadership and the concepts of reconciliation amongst people is so powerful and so personal for all of us. It makes us feel so good to have such leaders as you who set such an example for all of us. I hope that many of you will not only uh, take time to put this in the, uh, your names and your comments in the book for the exhibit, but will remind others that there's an opportunity uh, to be shared by coming and visiting and seeing these, uh, this exhibit.